is the master baster? We started out years ago using a baster, just a regular old turkey baster, something like this. You don't even have that one anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gone. We don't have it anymore. And we were actually using a really big cylinder at one time too, and we dropped down to the 100 mil cylinder. Sorry, let me fix that. And the reason I didn't like using this baster anymore is because you had to fill it multiple times. It just seemed like a pain. So we went to this guy, which works because it fills it in one shot, but it leaks. So we went to this thing, which is great, except that it sprays you. <laughs> and the silicone seals get stuck. Yeah. And if you're not really careful, you can spray it everywhere. So I asked on the community tab, just like last week sometime, what does everybody use? What do you recommend? And got a lot of really amazing answers. And we're gonna test some of these responses that we got and see who is the master baser. Couple of things we wanna do. We're gonna do some tests, but first I wanted to explain a few of the parameters that we're looking for. One, I am fully aware that a refractometer would solve probably 99.9% .9 of our problems. And we do have a digital refractometer now, and you're gonna start seeing that get used more and more. But I like to use a hydrometer because it's more accessible, more people have them, so there's that. Two, some of the basters that were recommended were metal. I don't really like that because I wanna be able to see that it's sucking up liquid. I wanna know what's in there. So they're not in this test at all. I'm really sorry if that's what you prefer. Um, not gonna work well for us. The things that I'm looking for is, can it pull up a liquid and hold it so that it doesn't spill everywhere? How much can it hold? And how disruptive is it to the whole process while it's doing this? So we have a couple of tests in mind, and the first one is going to be, will it hold? So in order to do this, Brian said, we need a colored liquid. And I was like, but it might stain the product. And he said, well, isn't that a test in itself? And I said, you know what? You're right. So Brian made a heavily diluted tea. Yeah, it's just a cup of tea poured into a fermenter of water. By the way, nothing here was sanitized in. <laughs> the red bucket of sanitization. <laughs> do we need to do that again? No. All right. The reason we didn't sanitize is because why bother? We're just testing these things out. Most of them are still in their original packages on purpose. And we're not going to drink the tea. And yeah, we're not drinking this. All right, so all good, of these items we can get from Amazon. So I'm gonna put the links in the description below, but whether you can get them or not is really dependent on where you your are. Your country of origin. And the availability on Amazon, because sometimes they run out of stock. Yeah, we ordered one that was supposed to come today, but it was never gonna get here because it's out of stock. So they, they do vary, but anyway. So our first test subject is this. It is a plastic baster with a rubber end and the company name or brand name is M-Y-S-X-M. Mysticism. <laughs> okay. For I, us on Amazon, it is $4.99. I would like to point out a couple of things about this. The other, the first thing I want to point out is it does have markings. They're not super easy to read, but they're large, so it's not bad. They are raised so you can feel them. It is plastic. The bulb is relatively squeezy. The top is a little more firm than I really think it should be. It just doesn't doesn't feel really really great. So let's let's give this a try. I'm gonna fully depress the end, stick it in, suck up as much as I can, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's the, that's the hold test. <laughs> so, I would say minimal amount f fell out of there. That I mean, that okay. could have just from from me shaking. So so just put minimum. Well, right now this is the winner in that category. So I'm just going to put it right there. I'm going to put minimum then. That's fine. This is not going to be the most scientific scoring and all that kind of thing. We're just kind of trying to figure out what one works best. I know it's going to come down to who has the best bulb clearest markings, and the smallest hole at the end is probably the key. So the next contender is from Norpro, and we find that we end up ordering a lot of stuff from the Norpro Pro brand, yeah. and we really like it. So our original smaller baster before this was a Norpro baster. This one is a Norpro baster, but it is a glass baster. Now this one, it feels a little squishier than the other one. 
So I like the bulb a little bit better. The lid, the top is still very, very firm. It is glass, okay? It's bro silicate glass. It also has a pretty narrow tip on it. No markings whatsoever. I don't know how important the markings really are, but it is something to consider. So its price point is $13.99, but currently it's on sale for $7.40. Okay, I see a problem right off the bat. The last one with just one squeeze of the bulb was able to fill all the way to the bulb. This one, that's the best I can get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, it that gets super high marks for the hold up. test. But the volume is kind of an issue for me. I'm not real happy with that, but that's a whole other test. So we will find out in a few minutes on that one. So this for the hold is is actually better than the, the, the mysticism. So that's our number one for the hold <laughs> test right now. Okay, so our next contender is brand Oh geez. HZXSDEG. Physics dig. There we go. <laughs> and it is five dollars and ninety-nine cents. This one comes with a surprise. It has a brush inside, which is actually a nice touch. The brush does fit in the tip too, so that is good. The tip on this one, there's a little bit of like flashing there that, I mean, it's not a big deal, but it is something of note. It does look like the hole is ever so slightly larger. Eh, maybe about the same. It does have markings. It has a very squishy bulb. The squishy bulb is important. Just, just so you know. The, what I'm talking about is the top part, the cap on some of these is very firm. Like it just feels really, really hard. This one, super soft. So that means it can actually suck up more. Another thing in comparison between this one and the other plastic one that we tested, uh, the M SXM, is that this is a clearer plastic. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely easier so to see through. The markings are much to easier to see the markings. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's just fully depress and Give it a shot here. Filled it up fully. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like if I shake it around, that's why I'm not making this a fully scientific test because I don't think I can. Sure. Um, it's roughly the same as the first one. Okay, so that's another minimum. So the Hizix Dig did just as well as the first one, I would say. It does get a little higher marks because it's a little softer on the bulb, and it does have better markings. That's about it. So the next contender is Fox Run. This is another glass baster, but note. They look practically identical. They even have the same marking on the bulb. It is, well actually, no, they're the same. The bulb is the same. The glass tube is almost exactly the same. This one just feels a little bit, the, the, the Norpro feels just slightly longer, but this one has beautiful markings on it. So the, uh, this one, I, I like this one the best so far, Fox Run. Fox Run is normally $7.89, but we got it on sale for $5.99. And I'm gonna fully depress and take a sample. And it seems to suffer from the exact yep. same problem as the other one. I think what it is, is they tried to put a larger volume tube on it, but they didn't make a larger bulb. Yep. One, nine, ten. So I'm going to say that's the same as the Norpro glass. Yeah, but based on the markings, I'm knocking the Norpro out. This is now our top contender. That's almost no loss. Look at that. It's like five drops. Nothing. <clears throat> I really think movement is what, what does yeah. it. These are yeah. not leaking on their own. Next contender is Good Cook. This is another plastic based baster. It is normally $4.85 and it's currently on sale for only $2.08. Now this does have nice clear markings. The problem is they're very small. So like, you know, for me, I gotta use the lower part of my glasses to read them. Um, just a thing, the, this is super smooth and nice. I can't remember if this is the one that someone said the seal here isn't really good or not. I think it is. Um, if it is, let me know, because I know who it was that said it. It was Julie. So I don't know if over time some of these might degrade more than others too. That's a test that we can't really do today, but I'm going to fully depress. I love the, see, as I'm doing that, it's actually, oh, that must it be. deformed from the, uh, 
I, it's difficult to get a full depression without deforming it off of the tubing. But I think I just did. And one, two, ten. Okay. So that was more similar to the MYS6N, but... It dripped more. It dripped more. There's more. Okay. Yeah, more came out. This so far is the worst performer. So that's minimum. It looks yes. pretty, but as soon as you start to squeeze, see that it just comes right off and it doesn't make a perfect seal. That's why it was leaking. There's no vacuum. Okay, oh, let me put this back. In. So this is from Homebrew, Ohio, and this is the one that we've had for a while and we actually were using before we switched to the syringe style. And you may notice that we used to call that the master baster. So, but I think it's going to get toppled. It's no longer the yeah. master baster. It's just it's a very large turkey baster style sampler, and that's why we liked it. But the hole on the end is enormous relative to the rest of the unit. The markings I didn't even know until today there was markings on there. That's how <laughs> prominent they are. They are raised. You can see them, but it doesn't really seem to be that prominent. But anyway, you're going to see why we stopped using this one very, very soon. All right. So this goes for $10.13. So I fully depress and up it goes, takes it in nicely. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, what the hell was I doing wrong all those it's years? It's the transfer that it leaks. Yep. That was your problem. Most leakage so far, but not as much as I expected. I know if you hold these things perfectly straight, they don't leak much at all. But watch this. I just need to do this really quick. Show the... Oh, the angle one? Yep. You normally do like this. Look at that. I'm not squeezing it. <laughs> I'm not even squeezing it. It's just pouring right out. That's not cool because I can take the other one. So this, this is the worst performance that we have so far now, because I can take this one, the Fox Run, is it? Yeah. Right, and watch this. See that? I'm not squeezing. It is dripping, but, but not, nothing yeah. like the other one. It's not just pouring out. So that's an important factor, and that is the re main reason why we're doing this. All right. So the next contender is our syringe. Now this comes in a packet of two uh, for $14.99, but you can get them on sale right now for $7.99. And the brand is D-E-P-E-P-E. D-E-P-E. -E -P -E. <laughs> hey, I didn't make this up, you know, that's just the way it's written. Okay, so this, I'm gonna go through the motions on this, but okay, here is a main flaw. The seals, while they're good and don't leak, they get sticky and they don't move smoothly. You really have to have like a lubrication in there, which I don't want to add foreign elements to my brew. Um, but I'm going to bet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's not going to leak. I mean, really. I can hold this up and do whatever I want. But herein lies the problem. See how floppy that is? If you recall from a video a couple weeks ago, we squirted the camera with it because when you're trying to push this out, you're literally squirting. You need an extra hand. There's a major flaw, major deficiency in using something like this. I'm sure someone out there knows how, you hear that? I'm sure someone out there knows how to do this thing without doing any of that. But in our case, it wasn't suiting the purposes we needed it for. This one's still winning. But you know what, I have to say, this one is a close second. The the Hizix dig is a close second. Well, the, both the glass ones were nearly nothing. Yeah. This one actually wins the hold test. For the hold test. Okay, you're right. For the hold test, it wins. Yeah. So I would say um, the syringe is first so far, the Fox Run is second, and then the Hizix dig is third. But wait, there's more. So the next one is E.C. Krauss Glass Wine Thief. Now, wine thieves are unique because with a baster, you put it in where you want it and it's, it's using suction to pull up a sample. Whereas with a wine thief, if I was to just go that far in, that's how much sample I get. Not as useful. So you have to go all the way in, which 
You want to be careful that your wine thief isn't larger or smaller than your fermenter. And then I have to put my thumb over the hole once it fills. I think it's full. And then I can pull up a sample. One, nine, ten. Now here's how you release the sample. Just take your thumb off. It's got a very small hole in the end, so it actually does a decent job. Minimal loss. I would put that, With honestly. the glass one, right? It's right, it's in front of the glass okay. one. Okay. It did a little bit better. Downside, you have to go to the bottom of the fermenter. We'll talk about that in a little while. And our last contender is the plastic three-piece wine thief. Now, right off the bat, I have a slight issue with the fact that it's three pieces, which sounds like a great idea, except each of those joints is a place where suction can be lost. And then we have this. It doesn't fit. That knocks it completely out of the running, totally. Okay. So and if you're curious, that goes for $10.19. It would work in three gallon and five gallon fermenters just fine. Um, it's going to work a lot like the glass one. It probably will drip just a slight bit more. So regardless of Brian's biases, here is the tally for the hold test. The winner being the syringe. Yep. It held the best. The second place running is the Fox Run glass. No. Oh, oh, the... The Wine Thief. The Wine Thief. Then and the Fox then the Fox Run. Run. And then the Nor Pro. Both glasses. Oh, you're saying the Nor... Okay, because the glass ones were better. Yep. Okay, she is right. For the sake of that test, she is absolutely correct. The second test the is the volume test. So we use a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder for our volume. Now, some of the kits we know come with a 200 milliliter cylinder rather than a 100 milliliter. 250, actually. That was a 250? Yeah, it was 250. It was okay. stupid huge. So regard, regardless, you, you'll have to take that into consideration on what type of cylinder you have that you need to fill. I'm going to tell you right now that Mega Maid, the syringe, is going to do 100 mil right off the bat because it's marked and it does that. My biggest issue is I'm applying a, a pretty good amount of force to this to get it to suck, you might say. And look at this. If I try to do this with just two hands, it's difficult, it's cumbersome, and the poss possibility of making a mess is great. And I make a mess anyway. I really don't need help. It really does. This is the other thing I really don't like. See that little bit left? You're kind of sucking air into it. You're oxidizing to do it. I, I, I'm not a fan of that. So where did it go? Exactly 100 mil. 100 mil. Which, if you're using a hydrometer, is probably the appropriate amount. So, yeah, for measurement and holding, it's probably going to win again. But you see some of the downsides to using it. Um, next, let's do the, the, the number glass, the, the glass wine thief. Okay. So, for this, here is the plus. You can take a sample easily and without really disturbing much, but you have to go all the way to the bottom to get the most of it. So if you only go like halfway, you're gonna get less. I'm gonna try to maximize it out just for the sake of this test. It's not simple to do. I have my thumb stuck on there like that. It's kind of crazy. And... So how much did you get for that? I got 35 milliliters. 35. So it would take roughly three fillings to get this in. Not really the most convenient way to go. So the Fox Run. Uh, fully depress. Notice I, I, I don't have to go all the way deep. I can just stay towards the top or go about halfway in. And I do like the baster concept for this. I, ooh, see? It doesn't let it all squeeze out at the end. I had to let some oxygen in there. That was weird. That goes to uh, 47 and a half. So, so far, the wine thief is going down, that's going up. All right, can you do the large, the old master baster, the home grill? Yes, Ohio? I can. This is why we bought this one, is because it can fill this in usually one shot, maybe just a little bit more than one shot. The trick is being very quick about it. You know, it's a little short. Looks like 88 to me. 88. Not quite 100. So for volume, it's in place number two. 
We're doing all of them again. We can do them all. Okay. Um, I, I think a lot of them are going to be very similar. All right, so do the Norpro glass. Here's the Norpro. Uh, 48, just like the other one. So it's even with that guy. Okay. I'm putting it to the side, though, because this one is a better unit. Uh, good Cook is the red knob. Yeah. Next up is the Good Cook. I have concerns. It's, it's not simple to use. Like, I just think in everyday usage, you'd probably knock that out and not really get much suckage, if you will. Which is a shame because it does have a very small hole, so leakage is minimized. Um, but it actually held more than the others. It actually held 65. That puts it in third place, doesn't it? So next we have the uh, rando number guys. All right. Well, you know what? Because these are so similar and this one just looks smaller, this one being the mysticism, I'm knocking the mysticism out. I think it's just out of the running. This <laughs> yeah. one is so similar I to it, has a better bulb, and it looks like it has a little bit larger. So this is the Hizzix Deg. If you squeeze properly, you can actually get it all out. Um, not bad, 50. So this would take two to get to a full, a full 100 mil. All right, so our winners are first place goes to the syringe. Yep. Now this is just for volume alone, okay? Second place comes to Homebrew Ohio. Yep. And third is Good Cook. Third is Good Cook. Fourth is Hizzix Deg. Fifth is uh, Fox Run. And sixth is the Wine Thief. All righty. Okay. So the next test should be ease of use. Yes. This is where we're going to see a lot of differences. And let's go backwards on this one. Ease of use. Wine thief. Super easy. The only downside is you do have to wait till it fills. You're not really sure, did it fill up? See, and in just doing that, I'm disturbing lease because I'm all the way to the bottom. Yeah. So ease of use, I would say this one's good. Um, maybe not the absolute best. So the wine thief, is good. Now let's move it moving up. Fox Run. Ease of use. It's easy to use. One thing I don't like, do you see that foaming action? It foams it up. I saw that with that one and the uh, Norpro. They both seem to have a leak yeah. in the uh, in the bulb. Let me let me get the Norpro again and check it just to make sure. I mean there's foam in there. Yeah, they both are oxygenating it as they lift it up. You know what? I'm not even going to... That, to me, is dangerous for the brew. These are both out. Knocking them out. They're gone. All right. Does his... His is, deg. <laughs> is it foamy? For ease of use, I mean, it's, you know, it's a turkey baster. They... they no it oxygenating. Doesn't, if you shake it, you can get it to leak. I would say excellent. It's better than the wine thief. Good cook. I keep worrying about that seal problem, but it seems like in actual usage, it's not an issue. It's not doing it. And this one, this one had a lot of volume, right? Uh, the Good Cook had 65 mil. It came into third place. Honestly, I, as much as I don't trust that seal, it doesn't seem like it's a problem. It's not oxygenating. There's no leakage. It's right up there with, with the Hizzix Deg. Okay, the Master Baster, the huge one. This one is going to be just as easy as any baster to use, except for one problem. It is so big and cumbersome that it gets knocked down a bit. I'm going to put it below the Wine Thief. But it is helpful if you're using, like if you're having a larger volume vessel. Yeah, if you're using maybe a... Maybe in, in primary, you didn't fill all the way up. Possibly. So it does have uses. I'm not saying it's useless. I wish the hole in the end was a little smaller and it would be perfect. I would totally love it. Okay, we've talked about this already. Ease of use for this guy. It has none. It's not it's easy to use. It's a pain in the butt. Now, somebody out there is probably like, what are you talking about? It's the greatest thing ever. And we used it because it was recommended to us. But I think it's just so much harder to use than all these others that I'm knocking it out. It's done. I wouldn't, I, if I had the choice, I wouldn't want to use it. It's, it's out of the running. 
All right, so between the hold test, the volume test, and the ease of use test, we have narrowed the fields down to four from our original nine. Which one did, which one of these four did best in the hold test? So the winner for the hold test got knocked out. The okay. second place was the glass wine thief. Okay, let's talk about the wine thief for a moment, because now we're going to talk about practical use and how much it disturbs the brew. I've said it before, you have to get to get a decent sample, which this was the smallest sample size, by the way, and it's glass, which um, feels, I don't know, I feel like this is gonna break. Feels like another hydropeter situation. You have to go all the way to the bottom. You are touching that lease, you are disturbing it in some way. To me, this gets knocked out just for that alone. I've been holding off on doing that, but this one, out. Third place was Fox Run. Which is knocked out. So that is our top three for the hold test. Okay, so now we're on to ones that don't hold quite as well. All right, so uh, the Norpro glass, which got knocked out due mm -hmm. to foaming. Yep. Uh, the foaming, to me, that's a problem with the brew. Pfft, out of the running, just for that purpose. So the, the next would be a tie with um, MYSXN and HZXSDEG. We took HS... We took that one out, the the his dig, yeah. Because I have a feeling, and I'll just do it. It's probably a small sample size, and I'm not wrong. Thirty eight. So it's a smaller sample size than the Hizix did. So there's no point. They're so similar otherwise. Yeah. But the Hizix did is better in almost every way. So that's why we knocked that out. So right. really, you're saying it's good cook or Hizix dead for duration of holding. Right. Uh, the the good cook got a minimum plus, where the his dig just got a minimum. So I think, I think we need to revisit that. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. This is the hold test again. So that's this one. Yep. Sorry for the semi chaotic nature of this video, but this is interesting. I'm I'm getting results that I did not expect. Actually, I thought I was gonna like the fox run best. So what I want to do is just do another hold. I'm not even gonna count or anything like that. I'm just gonna hold it over the thing. Well, yeah, I guess I should count. It's trying to suck up more. See that? I'm going to do it at an angle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now well, that was impressive. Even at an angle. At an it, angle, it was it, like a couple of drops. Yeah. Now, do I really need to show you what this one does again? Well, All right, his ex dig. One, two. You know what? I need to do that again because I spilled all over the place. It's a real show, folks. No script. <laughs> we had a rough idea what we we're going to do with this before we started. We're kind of making it up as we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would say they were so close. That... That's dead even. I mean, that's just a couple of drops again. Yeah. So those two are squarely even. Just because we can, let's show you what well, this one we does. We already showed them the I'm going to do it again, just because. Look at this. This is why I hate this thing. <laughs> I mean, I haven't even counted the... I wouldn't even gotten to five yet. And look at how much it leaked versus the others. It's just ridiculous. Okay, so I'm knocking the Master Baster out. Okay. No more Master Baster. So now, we are down to two units. So now let's get to, I'd say, construction and what we consider to be durability All and right. usability. Well, the good cook held 65 milliliters while his dig held 50 milliliters. So there's a significant difference, but I want to point something out. We're wa working with a hundred milliliter cylinder. I would never need 130 out of this. I need a hundred. Yeah, so it's still so be two regardless. you still have to do two. So the volume in this case didn't really make a difference. If it was below 50, that would make a difference. So for volume, they're equal as far as actual real life use. For holding, <laughs> how steady can you keep your hand, really? <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Both excellent for that. For readability, I would say the Hizix dig is better. Yeah. It's much easier to see those numbers. On the Good Cook, it's difficult to read. They really are. For attractiveness, the Good Cook is better looking. I think it is. I like red and black both. They're both my favorite colors. But this one, 
I just, I don't know, I like the design a little bit better. This is your classic standard, uh, you know, turkey baster. Turkey baster. <laughs> this one, I do have a slight issue. The silicone is so soft that I don't think it's going to hold that seal for a long, long time. It's just, it, see how easily that just pops right off? Which is great for cleaning, but really bad for keeping a seal. This one, it's a little thicker down here and has like a little rib inside so that, oh yeah, that sucker's not, that's not going to leak. That's, and I think that over time is going to make this one last a little bit longer. What's the price difference on these? All right, so Good Cook is normally $4.85, where Hizzig Dig is normally $5.99. So we're literally talking a $1.10 difference in price. For my money, Hizzig's Dig. That is the one. So this is this is our new sampler of choice. So this is the Hizzig Dig. Hizzig's Dig is now the master baster. <laughs> that was really interesting. I thought that was cool. Ah, hopefully you enjoyed it as well. If you have something that we didn't test that would follow into these parameters and perhaps beat something that we have tested, please leave that in the comments below and maybe we'll get another sampling going for you. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>